actually, I wonder, should we turn on a monitor so I can see what I'm, what you're seeing? The back one, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I am. So that's what everybody's seeing. <laughs> we want to do a restart or you know edit from here or we're still okay. Good evening and welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. Uh, glad that you're able to join us on Facebook. Um, we continue to go through the, the challenges of the coronavirus and uh, we're blessed that we can be able to worship together in this form. Uh, we need to continue to pray for our, our country, our leaders, uh, for our uh, health care professionals, as well as our church professionals that uh, have to make important decisions and uh, honor uh, those who are in authority over us. Uh, I'd like to start, start our worship tonight with a word of prayer. If you can please join me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy asking for your peace and comfort and strength. As things continue to change and we're concerned, we know you're a God that does not change and that we can cast all our cares on you because you care for us. Bless our worship. Uh, may you be in our, our midst. Uh, may your Holy Spirit strengthen us and comfort us, even as your Holy Word does. Uh, may we be closer to you, uh, not distant uh, like Peter was on the night you were betrayed. Uh, but we ask you to join us now, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So we call upon our holy God in the name of the Father and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll be using a abbreviated form of evening worship without music tonight, uh, so we'll just use the spoken parts to begin with the service of light. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is now the day, is the day of, of salvation. salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation. That the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. And may the poor be lifted up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Tonight's reading is from Matthew chapter 26, verses 57 and 58. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Continue our worship with the litany of prayers. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Reverend Nelson, our pastor in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our public servants, for the government, and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection, in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Help, 
save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Lord, remember us your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This time, we normally would be taking our offering. I please remind our members that you can drop off your offerings here at the church at any time, as well as if you'd like to make deposit at Pinnacle Bank in the Christ Lutheran Church account, you may do that. So thanks for your prayers and continued support as we move forward. This time, I'll continue to worship then with the sermon. We're continuing our uh, journey through Lent as it's all about Jesus, Peter, and you and I. And it's all about tonight, distant discipleship. In the name of Jesus, dear Christian friends, one of the great problems we face in life is fear. How appropriate for all the things that are happening in our world right now that there is fear uh, and, and anxiety, as we heard from our friend Jolene Lichty this morning on KBRX, is real because it affects us. Uh, it's something we know is out there. Uh, but you think about all the things that have happened in our world over time. Uh, we fought wars uh, so we can live in a country without fear. Uh, we maintain a strong uh, defense posture. We've devised uh, weapons that keep us from being attacked. Um, but now suddenly we face, you know, things as like easy as expensive, uh, uh, simple explosives strapped. We thought that was the worst of our fears, you know, if someone were to uh, be a, a suicide bomber. But now we've got this new thing called a coronavirus. And as we go through this, we wonder how we're going to be able to survive. We're fearful. Uh, no matter how we try to be safe and secure, there always is something to fear. We are fearful also in our lives as Christians. Tonight we can say, it's Jesus, Peter, and me. And it's all about fearful and thus distance, re distance discipleship. We're going to look at our fears, which make us distant disciples. But more than that, we're going to look at Jesus. The fear that makes us distant disciples is forgiven and overcome in Christ. Jesus' disciples were, for a time, fearless in their discipleship. They were inspired by the success of Jesus' preaching, his popularity, his demonstrations of power and authority. They were enjoying being part of his entourage as he went from countryside and from city to city. How quickly all this changes when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane this last time. We see Jesus taken, bound, and led away as a common criminal. Confidence and optimism change to fear. And tonight we see Peter, the fearful follower, the disciple who follows Jesus from afar. The enemies of Jesus had long planned to do away with him. Come on back there. And now at last their opportunity had come. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders had gathered. Jesus must face them alone. But as we see him led away, we find he's not entirely alone. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest and going inside. He sat with the guards to see the end. Peter kept his distance. He was a far off disciple. Sometimes we, too, are distant, far-off disciples. What is that distance like? Well, often it's being a half-hearted disciple. It's following Jesus only when it's convenient, when it requires no sacrifice. In other parts of the world, loyalty to 
Christ still costs Christians their lives. In comfortable America, what we are willing to do or not do for the sake of the gospel, what is that? What does that look like? Maybe for us, even as Christians, bold and faithful Christians, it means submitting uh, to the authorities who have said don't worship. That's something we may fear will cause problems down the road, but yet trusting God to use government officials for our protection, that's a gift from God too. But sometimes we're convenient in our faith in not doing that. For example, if you were in a classroom where they're talking about the Bible and the Quran and all the upshans, uh, and they're saying everyone, including the professor teacher, is very glibly affirming that all roads lead to the same place. You know that Christ is the only way to heaven. But what do you do? Do you politely, humbly testify to your faith as in Jesus as the only Savior? Or do you distance yourself from the whole conversation and instead do nothing? Keep quiet. Hide out. Over 3,000 infants are being killed every day in the United States by abortion. You have an opportunity to join in the life chain. But of course, somebody might see you. You might even wind up on the front page of the newspaper. What do you do? Stand up tall for the sanctity of God's gift of human life or decide, well, actually there's a lot of yard work to be done and Sunday afternoons are the best time to get things done in our yards, right? These questions have to do with discipleship. How are we going to follow Jesus? Fear kept Peter at a distance in his discipleship. Fear is at the heart of our faulty discipleship. We don't always have the courage of our convictions. We're afraid to live our faith because we're afraid of the consequences. We're afraid we might be ridiculed. We might lose our popularity. We might be considered odd or different. We may not get ahead in life as fast if we put what's right, what's honest, or what's unselfish above everything else. And all this is a sign of spiritual distance from God. We're afraid, so we follow from a distance. The distant disciple may soon not be a disciple at all. So what are we to do? When you're afraid of what it means to be a follower of Christ, think on him. And that's a wonderful thing in the midst of this coronavirus thing we're going through. We have a God who knows what it's like to suffer. He knows what it's like to have fear and seeing that fear in other people. We can turn to Jesus. His suffering and death reminds you of how much he loves you and how he's been part of our world and still knows what causes our pain and our fear, uh, even when we're fear of being too close to Jesus. In his life, death, and resurrection, they count for you. They mean something for you. They give you inspiration. They assure you of his love, and he wants you to follow him. He bore your sins in his body on the cross, and he lives again, having disarmed the powers that frighten you and keep you from faithfully following him. God's fear not. One of the most recent things I heard the words fear not are in the Bible 365 times. I don't think that's a coincidence. Every day, we should hear God say, fear not. Get out of bed. Face the world. I go with you. You are not alone. That's why we can say with God, His scriptures assure us, fear not, I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine, Isaiah 43. Use that a lot in hospital rooms. You still have to go through the rivers, the waters, the fire, but they will not overwhelm you, they will not burn you. For the God who redeemed you, who sent his son Jesus to die for you, is still with you today. Fear has to bow before our Lord's fear not. And Jesus draws us close to the heart of God as he is as his redeemed, restored, and forgiven people. The fear of being a disciple has to let go. So the call comes from Jesus. Follow me, even in the midst of uncertain times. And his path leads to his cross and his vacated tomb. That's what it means to follow Jesus. He's already done all the work by dying on the cross. He's also risen from the dead, so we have no fear of death. We have no fear of anything that can happen in this life, for God goes with us. He's put away forever our fears. His path leads to death of your sinful self, because he's alive of you. His path leads to love, compassion, 
even if that person took the last roll of toilet paper. You're still going to show them love and compassion. And you're going to serve service to your fellow man. Check in on that neighbor that's uh, maybe alone, but who's an older person that doesn't have anybody close by to check in on them. Maybe being kind and generous to someone who's having a tough time financially. We call that kind of service and care and love and compassion the Christian life. This is not uncharted territory. Jesus is ahead of you. You follow him. He's been to the cross, to death and back even. He went to forgive you and to fill you with the heart, the will, and strength to be his loyal disciple. Peter followed at a distance to see the end. No doubt he expected the worst, but the end turned out to be the best for Peter and for us. The end turned out to be the cross and then the resurrection. It was the end of sin's guilt, sin's power, the devil's might, and the fear of death. The end is the beginning for us, the beginning of the forgiven life, the new life in Christ, the life of discipleship with the ongoing grace to, in following Jesus. This is a story of Jesus, Peter, and each of us. Amen. Now may the peace of God pass passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We conclude our worship with prayer and blessing. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you have taught us what you would have us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit for the sake of Jesus Christ to hold fast your word and hearts which you have cleansed, that thereby we may be made strong in faith and perfect in holiness and be comforted in life and in death. Amen. Receive God's blessing. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. To God.